going to be talking today about really how to break through, how, how to build that sisterhood, that squad, to help really empower all of our women moving forward. But through all of what everyone spoke about, I think there seems to be this underlying theme of just bring your authentic self because you can take that processing out of the equation and bring your best work to the table as well, which is really empowering. The tax for a woman having a baby on her comp is something like 4% for each, each child. And for a man, your salary goes up 6% for each child that you have. So what are we gonna do about that? The, the last creative that we brought, she was a new mom and we brought her mom with her so that she could still nurse and go to the conference. That is very untypical at an agency for a conference. I remember after having my second child, I came back from maternity leave and my boss had quit. He was leaving to take another role. And he was encouraging me and had um, named me as his successor. I didn't want the job. I was freaked out. I was just back and I was like, I'm still trying to figure out how to have two kids and like do this whole work thing. And um, he left and I was kind of sitting, sitting on my hands and a peer of mine said, so we're all waiting for you to raise your hand for this, but you've got to ask for it. And that was kind of the push I needed. I did, and I got the job, um, and then I figured it out. You know, like, you're not always going to be completely ready. The timing's not always going to be perfect. It usually isn't. Um, but you have to just go for it. But it's always that feeling of just getting comfortable being uncomfortable and knowing it's going to be uh, different than it was before, and that's okay. And now I think we're finally seeing a different time and a place where there's a recognition of those things and that being comfortable for, you know, getting comfortable being uncomfortable won't be about being a woman, but just about being challenged in a different way in what you're doing. I grew up in the auto industry, and um, when I started in the auto industry, I was probably the youngest person at a table, at the engineering table, by like 10 or 20 years. So you can imagine there was a, I was, I had a lot of, I think, angst about how I was being perceived at the table. Um, and I think that kind of took up a lot of energy early on in my career, just because I'd be sitting at the table and be burning inside with something that I wanted to say, but then I'd have to think like, wait, did they, do they think that's gonna be a good idea because it's totally different. Yeah, all this processing that was going on in my mind. Later on in the career, just having you know been through a couple iterations of that, confidence is one thing that I think helps a lot. As you get older, you just care less. <laughs> but also I think that um, others are more willing to listen. Sisterhood, um, whatever you wanna call it, coming to the girls' lounge, being a part of this community has given me a sense of belonging um, and inclusion, like personal inclusion, that I'm not sure um, I would have been able to kind of compensate for in other ways had I not had it. And I have said, and I will all keep saying, um, I've been, I feel like I travel in a pack of women who've not just had the experience of being executives and mothers and taking care of elderly parents and so on and so forth, but who've come of age as executives together grappling with these issues. And it's just made me feel like, you know, it's, it's okay to, you know, feel like I'm gonna do it differently or say it differently or behave differently in a particular situation. The learning that I got was you had to be excellent to be qualified. Um, you had to, the, the bar is so much higher for you because you are black. And that's still the case. Um, and so I show up with excellence. I show up very polished. And sometimes I think that perfection, <laughs> what I was observing was it was breeding this, you know, competitive spirit. And so that's not my MO at all. For, for those that know me, they know that's, that's not how I roll. So I was like, we gotta fix this. <laughs> we have to fix this quick. And so what I started to do was, um, obviously I'm not gonna stop showing up excellent and polished, but how do I bring people along with me so that they're not feeling that, that threat? And so I think there's power in being vulnerable. I think there's power in um, bring, bringing people in early so they feel bought into what you're building and they feel a part of it. When I'm recruiting and the young talent that comes in that's female, man, are they badass. The things that they negotiate with me first makes me go, ah! And then <laughs> I'm so proud and I, I, it's exhausting, the things that they bring up. 
but I'm just like, man, for, I hope that I had a part in this. And and yes, let's talk about the minutia of the hours that you're gonna spend and where you're gonna spend because they are prioritizing. Work needs a whole new set of rules. Leadership needs a whole new set of rules. Those have to be written by multiple generations, by men, women, people of color. And I think for the people in power today, and I would say everybody sitting up here is, in, and frankly, if you're in Cannes, you're in power somewhere. Your company spent a lot of money getting you here. For the people in power, it's like, what are you willing to give up to see that we get to the place where work needs to go to serve families better, to serve society better, and ultimately to drive individual and professional growth.